What's going on, everybody? Big C9021 here. Um, right. Seven days to die. It's been a while. I'm back in the game. So, Alpha 11's came out. It's caused a shit ton of problems for people. It's an amazing update. Don't get me wrong, but the, I'm getting messages off people all the time saying, see, my servers fell over. See, I want to set up a new server. What do I do? How do I transfer my settings? How do I transfer my prefabs and all that shit? So, what I'm going to do is, because obviously as 7 days keeps updating, I'm going to make, these video clips are going to be fairly small, but it means that if something becomes obsolete, then I can just pull that video off YouTube and replace it with a new one. So, the topic that I'm going to cover today is the fastest way of getting a new server, when, just as an example, Alpha 11's came out, you want to get rid of your Alpha 10 server and you want to get a new one up and running as quickly as possible. Now, I'm not going to go through the ins and outs of setting up a server. I'm going to show you what the most efficient way is of getting set back up. All right. So here I've got a remote desktop connection to another PC, which I use as my server. So what we're going to do is... The first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up Task Manager and see if 7 Days to Die is running. Now, we can see here that it is. So, if you want, you can use whatever server manager you use to stop the server. Now, if you don't have any sort of server manager, then what you can do is you can just find the 7 Days to Die executables, anything to do with 7 Days to Die, and you can just end the process. Okay? This is quick and nasty, but hear me out, okay? So, now that we've definitely stopped the server, what we want to be doing is we want to be going to wherever you've installed it to. And what you want to be doing is you want to be just rename. I say, yeah, call it, say, Alpha, Alpha 10, okay? So what you've done there is you've simply renamed your server and now you can go to Steam, you can go to the uh, go to software, actually no, it's not in software, it's in tools. Scroll up and you can delete the 7 days to die dedicated server, okay? And then you could reinstall it. Now that sounds fairly straightforward, but what it means is, it means that now we've still got our old server. Just uh, doing its thing. So it means we've still got our old server, which we've called Alpha 10. As you can see, I've got a couple of old Alpha 9 and probably even Alpha 8 servers there. Um, done. Yeah, that's done. So, in a minute... We are going to have our 7 Days to Die dedicated server appearing in here. It shouldn't take too long to download. I've got a fairly decent internet speed. So what that enables us to do is that enables us to go back into our old server and start transferring information, such as the server config and all that shit. Now, what you also want to be doing at this point is you want to be going into wherever your save games are saved to, so as an example, seven days to die saves. And what you want to be doing is you want to be removing anything in the saves folder. And you want to be putting it somewhere else. So this is a 10.4. So what I've just done there is I've just moved my old save games. Okay, so it means now when I start this server up, the save games will be made in here and they won't clash with my old save games. And that downloads frozen. That should kick back up in a second. Ah, oh, there we go. So yeah. All this video has shown you is how to not delete your server, but how to install the new server from scratch, 
because another thing as well i found with some versions of seven days we've had updates where they've left old files behind and it's caused problems i would always say use a fresh installation of a dedicated server um even if it means pulling your old files across once you've done it um but for a fresh install it means you've got all of the latest files and you're not going to run the risk of having say alex files out of date and some other crazy file that's caused things to break so in the next video we're going to be looking at how you can compare files and start pulling across things like configuration and your admins and all that kind of stuff okay see you guys in the next video